Commander Central episode 154, and today we're going to be doing another Dex You Play episode, taking a look at Patreon supporter William Hoffman's thriller zombie tech. I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Thank you, thank you. How's it going today? It's Thursday. It's, uh, it's, it's Thursday. actually a Thursday. It is, we're, and we're all recording on a Thursday again. Everyone's back. Welcome back to the fold, Chris. Thank you. How's life treating you? Yeah, could be better. Could, could be better. Could be worse, could, I guess. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. <laughs> could be a lot worse. <laughs> you got to, to test fire a new deck. We'll talk about that briefly. You showed up out of the blue at the shop with a Phoenix Persistent Petitioners deck. Mm, get some. I won a game that night with you that did. deck, oh, you too. Did. Nice. Were you pretty happy with it? It needs some tweaking. Those decks are tough to balance because you need to have X amount of the Petitioners or Rats, or yep. whatever it is. Which is at least 20, but maybe not 30. That's, that's what I started and, at was the minimum amount of 20. And, and then. And trying to find that balance is really tricky. Yeah, because then you got to find the balance, especially in blue, of card draw and removal, because yep. you're in black too. And and you have no way to deal with enchantments or artifacts on top of it. So you're like, there's things you can't you got deal with. You get imprisoned in the moon. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's like the only thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Capsize or bounce stuff, I guess. But um, yeah, so actually, I was surprised to see that, but it, it played pretty well in the, the game we played. Yep. So. I, d- I didn't hate on anybody. I tried taking you out, but that didn't work. <laughs> Always take out the strongest player first. That was actually a conversation. In oh, a- wait. No, you're supposed to do the other way. Never mind. <laughs> take the weakest player first. And I came up in a game. Um, uh, listener Matt was in a game with some other people, and Matt at one point said, you should really take out Dana because I've seen him come back and, and win these games at, at you know five, six life before, and I was at four life. And, and and we all were like we're all laughing about it, and I I came back and won from poor life down. I it's not the first time I've ever heard that story. <laughs> no, because what I was able to do was it was with my Vela deck, and what I was able to do I had a um, KCI out, and not much on my board state, but I was able to drop a um, mere battle sphere, and then sacrifice enough stuff to cast an all is dust, attempting to clear the board. But it got, but it got packed. But I still had a, cu- a couple of those artifacts left and mana free that I was able to then cast Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, which gives affinity. And then I was able to kind of like start playing a few things out that turn, get another Tezzeret in play, and then use their use both abilities to do damage to people for a number of artifacts I control in that same turn. The kicker was um, the player right before me had flashed in a Dictator of the Twin Gods. Oh, no. Yay. And, and, and had killed somebody because of it. But then it came to me, and so those Tezzerits that I didn't have a ton of artifacts out, but the Tezzerits that were like, deal six damage to each player because of the artifacts I have out, that turned into 12. And there was two Tezzerits, which, you know, doubled for both of them. So, And then it reset me because I gained life off those. So it got me back from four to, you know, 20 or something. People let that happen. I try warning people, and no one ever listens to me. <laughs> Well, this was that situation where Matt also warned people, but it was uh, one turn too late. So, anyway, um, should we look at this deck? Sure. Is anything else too exciting to talk about? There's no housekeeping to, to deal with. So. No, we handled that all earlier this week. All right. Um, zombie Tribal Deck brought to us by William Hoffman. And as usual, there's a few questions here that Max asks, like, what is your meta like? And what is his answer? Uh, he says they tend to play a lot of three-player games uh, with a, a a smidgen of 1v1 mixed along with maybe those four- to five-player pod games. So aggro decks are considerably more relevant and prominent in the meta than you might see in the wild. Uh, players tend to have lower uh, mana curves in their deck with fairly fast mana. They see Chrome Mox and Mox Opal and use a lot of one uh, CMC mana dorks along with plenty of fetches and uh, the ABUR duels. Generally uh, powering fairly wholesome strategies. Uh, Infinite combos do show up, but generally are not the focus of a deck and instead a secondary win con for when games go long. Tutors tend to be tightly focused packages to solve problems rather than finding the combo pieces. So Trinket Mage or Sunforger. And then there's a lot of fairly focused, fairly expensive decks rolling around, but they tend to run very wholesome win cons. I run to relatively little control decks with focused combo decks being almost non-existent. But Super Friends are a serious factor, and all decks have a re- relatively heavy on removal and board wipes as a result of our aggro heavy meta. That sounds pretty similar to how I would describe where we play for the most part. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, Agreed. Asking, what is the goal of the deck, Chris? 
Uh, he says he built the deck specifically for Rooftop Storm. I mean, that's a pretty good card to build around. <laughs> and abuse it as much as yeah. possible. Uh, so specifically chose Geese and Draw for their synergy with Rooftop Storm. And the incremental value slash grindy game plan appealed to him. Along with being more focused on self-mill and the zombie tribal aspect than other commanders such as the Scarab God. Uh, the aim of the game is to beat my opponents to death with an army of zombies. If that doesn't work, I'll drain their health away with Dire, Gla- dire Graph Captain and the like while gaming, gaining inter- incremental advantage with every creature I sacrifice. If all else fails, there's probably more infinite combos <laughs> in the deck than I know about. Well, I'm going to say right now, I looked at this deck... And I'm not going to tell you if there's any in here. I'm just going to let you figure these out. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a grave crawler in your deck, there's an infinite combo. Oh, there always <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as he says, most of the combos in there you know, include grave crawler, rooftop storm, Liliana, untouched by death, Phyrexian altar, and any number of the sack outlets. And what are some of the weaknesses or areas we should focus on? Uh, the games tend to suffer when he can't have access to Gisa and Jeralf, whether it's through... Uh, a very slow early game or just repeated removal uh, until he can cast it. It tends to be games where he gets stuck only working out of uh, the cards in his hand and it kind of uh, slows him down completely. Uh, to that end, I have been trying to shore up the early game and introduce some reasonable backups to the commander. Uh, side note, he's very happy with the combo potential in the deck. Uh, he's deliberately cut most of the tutors from the deck to reduce on uh, the safety net of just tutoring up the combo for the win. Sure. Uh, he's been actively avoiding cards like Grave Pact that can completely lock a player out of the game, but he's perfectly okay flesh bagging someone over and over through bringing it back. Uh, he'd rather just slow them down versus lock them out completely. Uh, lately, he's been attempting to re- reduce his resilience on staples, so he's running something like Kedrick Leviathan in place of Cyclonic Rift in this deck. That makes sense. He'd be very interested in similarly synergistic cards that could take the place of other overplayed cards he may be running currently. Okay. His budget restriction for cards and upgrades, he doesn't have any real hard or fast budget restrictions. He's not running out tomorrow to buy an Underground Sea or anything as it costs a lot and doesn't change very much, and I would agree with that assessment. But he's prepared to drop significant cash on a worthwhile upgrade, so don't worry about budgets too much. And his PS is he knows Jace Unraveler of Secrets is bad, but he has the S, uh, San Diego Comic-Con art of him eating his own brain, and it's just too cool of a card to not run. I mean, thematically, it's a zombie Jace. I, yeah, I, I'm not going to argue with that at all. I get it. To be honest, I wrote him back and said, that's one of my favorite Jaces, so I'm not going to say it's trash. It's actually, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a perfectly good card. I'm not going to... I was hoping you weren't going to say anything, because as soon as we dig a, dug into him, I'd be like, you need to get rid of that Jace. Jace is garbage. <laughs> just, just troll him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the kind of card I'm never going to tell somebody to not run, even if, you know, mathematically something might be better, but, like, I get it. So, uh, first things first here, why don't we read Geese and Giralf, Max? Geese and Giralf is a legendary creature, human wizard, uh, power toughness 4-4 four, four for two generic mana and blue and a black. Whenever Geese and Jarolf enter the battlefield, uh, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Then during each of your turns, you may cast a zombie creature card from your graveyard. That's pretty solid. It is pretty so, solid. So solid that once upon a time... I had this deck. You had this deck. Yeah. Uh, why did you wind up taking it apart? I don't like Demir. Okay, all right, sure, I get that. The restrictions and being unable to deal with things without counter spells can be frustrating. Yep, and I, I think I had that deck together through, like, Amonkhet, so I got some of the stuff like Plague Belcher, like some of the newer zombies, okay. but, I mean, now with Throne of Eldrain and even, like, the return to the return of Ravnica, we've gotten more zombies since then. Yeah. I mean, it'd be something to revisit, but Demir just isn't a color that interests me still. Sure. I haven't found the general that really says, play me. Okay. Um, I, I like Jason Gisa and Drolf, excuse me. I think they're pretty solid commanders. Zombies are fun. The problem sometimes in tribal decks, um, I'm thinking of like bird tribal specifically, sometimes the merfolk before they got green, is it's tough sometimes to win games consistently. Um, merfolk getting access to green gave them overruns, which kind of solved that to a degree. But like I've seen plenty of white-blue merfolk decks that are perfectly fine decks, except for they just don't know how to kill people. Same thing with, with the white-blue bird decks. They just can't get enough damage through. Um, my Sphinx deck, it kind of works out because Sphinxes are just giant for the most part. Mm-hmm. And because they almost all have really good abilities so that there's enough value there. 
zombies tend to be okay in this regard. They also tend to have good abilities like Sphinxes. There's a lot of recursion in the graveyard, and there's also a lot of lords yes. as well as the infinite combos and things like the Diagraph Captain loops and Flesh Bag loops where, like, you can control the game in addition to generating damage that isn't relying on combat damage. And if you do need combat damage, you've got buffs. And as far as tribes go, they're just really, really solid. Yeah. And there's a bunch of colors, too. I mean, like, the, you know, we've got Esper zombie decks now, and you can play them in in Demir and Mono Black zombies as a thing. And is there a Jund commander? I'm not sure if there's a Jund, but there's definitely a... Isn't, uh, Gyrus is a zombie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he is. So if you wanted to go that route, you absolutely could. You could go Glissa zombies if you wanted to, or Gerard in, in Golgari. Um, there's obviously Grixis stuff with uh, Thraxamundar, so there's a whole, just basically any color combination you want, you could probably make a zombie deck. So as far as tribes go, they're pretty zombies do not solid. discriminate. They do not. Right? They, do, <laughs> they do not care. It's going to be are... one of those episodes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Halloween. Good for you, zombies. <laughs> and yeah, we, we didn't actually, we should note, we didn't plan doing a zombie deck on Halloween. It just worked out it that worked way. worked out that way. Yeah. So first things first, let's jump in, take a look at the mana base. It's a pretty easy thing to do in a two-color deck. I'll just read them off real quick. There's an Academy of Ruins, an Ancient Tomb, a Bajuka Bog to deal with graveyards, a Cabal Coffers because that's pretty playable in a two-color deck. Uh, deck more Salvage because your commander mills. There's worse things to put in the graveyard than that. Drawn Catacombs, Drawn Yard Temple, same thing. When your commander mills stuff, it's a way to get a land back if it gets milled in the graveyard. Uh, Dusk Mantle, House of Shadow, Fetid Pools, Field of the Dead, a uh, recently banned standard card. High Market is a Sack Elwit. There's three islands. Uh, a Manamo School at Water's Edge, which lets you untap a, a legendary permanent. A Morphic Pool, fantastic land out of Battle Bond. Uh, an Ophelia Drown Yard, Nykthos, since you're in two color, you can usually get pretty good mana out of that. Frexian Tower is a Sack Outlet, Puda Delta is a Fetch. Um, a couple other duels like Sunken Hollow, Tainted Isle, Temple of Deceit. Seven Swamps, and Holy Grotto to recycle zombies to the top of your library, an Urborg for fixing and for interaction with uh, Cabal Coffers, and a Watery Grave. It's a pretty solid mana base. Is there anything you guys think would be useful to throw in here? I think it needs a couple more lands. Okay. And I think I would probably, I understand there's a lot of separate lands in here, but I would split up my basics a little bit more, specifically because of Field of the Dead. Allows you more access to get it to go off. So at the very least, if you're running Field of the Dead, you should you should be running one of the snows and one of the non snows. Non snows. Yes. So at the very least, because yep. there's just zero downside to doing that, and it makes Field of the Dead that much better. And sometimes you can catch people with their pants down if they're playing sure. yep. cards that buff lands or whatever that give you extra mana, and it, they do it on a snow land. Absolutely worth it. Um, yeah, it, there's only ten basics here. I think 33 lands is. Is a little leaner than I would like in a deck that isn't running green, green or a ton of mana rocks. Ton of mana rocks. And there's plenty of mana rocks in this deck, but it's also, but it's not like an absurd amount, and they're yes. not the zero drop ones. I mean, I feel like you're going to get burned too often. It's not like it's a super. I mean, it's three point one five CMC. That's pretty lean, but it's not like my Edric deck lean, where it's you know, it's sub two or something. I, I I would be not super comfortable running 33. I'd be, man, I I would personally be like to be at least 35 in this deck. I think so too. Minimum 35. Any particular ones um, that you don't like that are already in here? I don't know if it's not, it, it falls under I don't like. I just want to know what he uses Manamo for besides untapping other lands. Because there's only like three legendary permanents besides lands that care about being tapped. So like Grimgrin is in the deck. Being able to untap him after he swings, that makes sense. I mean, it doesn't come into play tapped. So there's not a lot of downside to it. So if this is a deck where you never, ever see a Blood Moon or Back to Basics. Sure. And, and you have one lying around because you cracked Kamigawa packs or you found it in a collection or you bought it when it was $6 or something. Then I guess run it. Right. There's no do- there's no real downside to it if you don't see non basic land hate. Um, I agree. I don't know if it helps that much other than it gives you a little bit of vigilance once in a while. I mean, it, you can abuse Nykthos with it. You can abuse sure. Yeah. Uh, Phyrexian Tower if you want, but I guess maybe maybe the Nykthos abuse is enough. 
Maybe. So, the one I wasn't sure of was Dusk Mantle House of Shadow. It is taps for a colorless, and you can spend a blue and a black. Target player puts a top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. It soaks up three mana to do that, two separate mana and the one off the land. Um, if it milled three or something, or two, maybe, but I don't know if... I think that's the other one, because I know there's yeah. another one that does it, and I think it's two or three. And that was the one out of um, Innistrad, I think, first Innistrad yep. set. Um, I just don't think three mana to mill one card is worth it very often. I guess there's some flexibility here in that you can hit someone who just did a vamp tutor or something, let and tutor or whatever. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think of that one? It it helps fuel playing out of his graveyard, but I think it could be cut. At the cost of three mana? I don't think it would be, I mean, I think I'd be tempted to just have that be a basic land. Yeah. Just make sure you get your, because it makes colorless, it doesn't come into play tapped, I guess, but I don't know if it's worth that slot necessarily. Other than that, I think it looks like a pretty good land package. I do like seeing things like Drown Yard Temple in a deck like this where you are self-milling off your commander because you can get away with a, color, a few colorless lands in this kind of deck, and if you happen to mill it, you can kind of ramp, you ramp off it, basically. Kind of, yeah. So I think that this, this is a good deck. Same thing with um, Dak Mar Salvage, which I mentioned. There's way worse things that get knocked into your graver than Dak Mar Salvage. So I think that's a pretty solid land base. I would just maybe add one or two more basics at least. Yeah. Where to next? Should we move over to artifacts? Sure. What do we got there, Max? We have 12 artifacts, so I'll just read them quick. We have Altar of Dementia, Charcoal Diamond, Cold Steel Heart, Crucible of Worlds, Demir Signet, Felwar Stone, Mesmeric Orb, Oblivion Stone, Phyrexian Altar, Skull Clamp, Soul Ring, and Talisman of Dominance. That's a pretty good ramp package in terms of artifacts. I mean, Talisman, Soul Ring, um, Felwar Stone, Demir Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Solid... Charcoal Diamond, I don't like. Here. Neither do I. Um, but like, you're, you're, he's running what eight rocks, basically. Yep. That's not. A, that's. I think for a Demir deck, that seems perfectly reasonable. Charcoal Diamond. For those <laughs> that don't know, two mana, taps for a black. <clears throat> comes but it in comes tapped. Into, but play it comes tapped. into play tapped. Um, you know what? If budget isn't a huge concern, that just make an arcane signet. Exactly. Like yeah. That, that's the that's the play there. I think. However, I would also say that looking at this deck, um, about three quarters of the cards in it are black. You could probably pretty successfully run a, the, the Jet Medallion, which makes all black spells cost one colorless less. Usually you only run those in a monocolor deck, but when three quarters of your spells are black, that probably is going to functionally be a two mana rock. And then there's some turns where you're going to cast three black spells that will save you three mana. True. I don't know for sure if I would do that. I would probably do Arcane Signet I, first. I would rather have Charcoal Diamond over the Medallion, though. You think if so? If I had to choose between the two. Oh, no, no. Because Arc- Charcoal Arc- Diamond can still tap late game for any of my blue spells that I might have That's to cast. That's true. Well, I would just run. I think Arcane Signet's the one I would yes. just run first. Yeah. Um, Ultra Dementia, I, I mean. There, there's your infinite combo. Yeah. With Gravecrawler. Right. Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crucible makes sense in a deck where your commander is going to be self-milling you. Mesmeric Orb. Uh, whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller puts a top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. I don't like that in this deck. It makes sense in some decks. Uh, it did a ton of work, um, I would imagine, in your Phoenix deck this it week. It did. When we were playing, it did. <laughs> yeah. uh, except for you play that stupid enchantment. Yeah. But it was. it's a solid card. Um, however, there's not a ton of graveyard hate here. And... I don't know. I feel like this it, it runs the risk of burning you. Like, there's enough other ways you can put stuff in your graveyard without putting stuff in other players' graveyards where they can take advantage of it. Exactly. And like that, that your Phoenix deck, Chris, where you're running Line of the Void and you're running every XL any, spell any I way can. you can <laughs> to take care of graveyards, the, it, it's way less risky. He's not running all those here. So there's going to be enough times where you run into that Gliss of the Trader deck and you're just like fueling artifacts into their hand or you're going to run into someone else's graveyard recurred, like a Maldrotha deck, which is really popular. You're going to run into those decks and someone's going to take advantage of that. Mismatch. Everyone flips their commanders yeah. and it's a whole gack and you're like, ah! Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 
I I agree with both of you. I think this is overall probably does more harm than good. <clears throat> but I'm going to take the devil's advocate here and be he plays in a very creature heavy, aggro heavy meta. What if this is just something that makes sure they can't overpopulate the board before he does? Especially when he wants this deck to be more grindy than aggro based. If you're dumping their all their warriors in an Ajila deck into their graveyard with no true recursion, you might be okay. But I do agree overall it probably does probably does more harm than good in a average scenario. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if I wanted the effect, I would better just do it one time with one of those, you know, look at the top five cards of your library, put one into hand, pitch one. Yeah. Yep. Something along those lines, or draw three, discard one kind of spells where you're going to have the option to you know, even chart a course. Like chart a course for the mana, you're, you're paying for it for the two, the two mana. You could just draw two cards or you can have the option to put one in your graveyard. I feel like I would rather just do that one time than risk getting burned by orb. That's me. What do you guys think of Oblivion Stone as a removal spell here? I like it. Um, Can you tell me why? Because you're in Demir. But Bro. you're in Demir. You like have it, black. It takes out all permanents. True. All that's true. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. That's true. Okay, that's fair. And worst case scenario, you have it out there. And if you're playing in a heavy aggro meta where they're not playing a lot of, where they're playing more creature removal than anything, because obviously you're in right. a heavy aggro. So the removal for these kinds of cards aren't as big. So then you're just like, oh. Fate counter on this dude, fate counter on this dude, crack the stone, the you know, and then just wipe their board and you still got two dudes left. And okay. unlike and unlike Nev's disc, where it always comes into play tapped, this does get, give you the option to drop it for three and then crack it immediately. Because no one, I mean, I mean like you, short of a stifle effect, you have priority, you'll cast this, yep. it'll resolve, assuming no one counters it, and then you just crack it and it, it goes off. So um, that's an upside. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I, I always, t- I tend to maybe mentally ignore the artifact destruction when I'm playing black because you have so many board wipe options that I always feel like I don't need to resort to it. But in Demir, that makes sense. It does deal with things you can't deal with any other way. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. Um, any other of these artifacts that, that raise an eyebrow or the things that you'd like to see here maybe? I have a couple suggestions. Okay. I think Desecrated Tomb might be okay in this deck. I get you can only cast one creature a turn with Geese and Geralt from your graveyard, but... It's still a 1-1 one, one bat that comes with them. Mm-hmm. And it's flying. Yep. So you have fl- it's something in the air. A lot of these zombies don't fly. There is a wonder in the deck. We'll get to that later. But I think Desecrated Tomb might be very valuable in this deck. It's also one more thing that, that works really, really nicely with Gravecrawler. Yep. Yep. I was thinking, as you brought this up earlier, about uh, theme decks like this... Um, I think it's Throne of the God Pharaoh. I think that's the that's artifact. the one that brings them back as four fours. No, it's the one where you tap that when they become tapped at your end step. It deals yeah, that's damage. Throne, yes. Throne of the God Pharaoh. Yes. Yeah, because that would help get the damage through. Yeah, and if you and there is a lot of creatures in this deck, it is semi kind of an aggro deck. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I think it's a good card. I don't know if I would run it here necessarily. But it's not a bad call. It no. is a it is a way to deal with, to get damage in without having to be reliant on the combat step, which is always pretty yep. useful. Yes. So, did you, did you have any more there, Max? Um, I mean, this is a tribal deck, so even like something like Harold's Horn. I know it's kind of pricey; it's pushing twenty bucks. But is it really? Yeah, it's like eighteen dollars according to EDH Rec. I don't trust EDH Rec. Yeah, <laughs> trash show. <laughs> Uh, you know, it makes your zombies cost one generic less, and then you can look at the top card of your library at your upkeep. If it's a zombie, uh, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then you draw again. So, like, you, you're gaining fuel. Worst case, you, you discard the hand size, and you have something to cast next turn from your graveyard. Yeah. I, I also feel like Vanquisher's Banner is really tempting to run into this kind of deck. Um, it's a little bit extra gas. It, it's got draw baked in. The, the only real downside to it is maybe it, it keeps your skull clamp from working. True. But, I mean, Harold's Horn, I guess, gets around that. But you, there's enough zombie lords that kind of that, turn your skull clamp off as it that, is. So That's kind of my thought on Vanquisher's Banner for this specific tribal deck is that zombies already have half a dozen lords. They do, yeah. And not many of them are actually in this deck yet. Where I'd rather just run the lords, play into my theme... Because I can't recast Vanquisher's Banner with Geese and Geralt from right. my graveyard. 
I can well, recast Lord of the Accursed. And I think if I was going to spend five mana on that kind of effect with Vanquisher's Banner, I would probably rather just spend it and run... Coat of Arms and no, win. No, what's the... Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or the blue enchantment. Um, Kindred Discovery. Kindred Discovery, yes. which is going to draw you twice as many cards. So I, I, I get that argument completely. What about the six mana rock? Door of Destinies? No. The Immortal it's, Sun? Yes, the Immortal Sun. There's he's a running. lot of Planeswalkers he's got, in this yeah, deck. Yeah, he's got five, six Planeswalkers. Six, so. which is fine. Yeah, I play Immortal Sun in my Aminatu deck, and that all the, there's only four creatures in the deck. Okay. Um, You're living the, on the edge, buddy. The whole purpose of it is, as I remember from what he described, he said that Super Friends is a theme in his yes. shot. The ability to draw extra, reduce the cost of your spells, and your creatures get plus one, plus one is huge. Yeah, it's a solid card. I still think I would, for spending that much money, I would run Kindred Discovery, I think, first. That card just wins, like, it, I've seen so many times that card hits, and if no one deals with it in a turn, they've gotten so much value that it's really tough to bounce back from. But Immortal Sun's a really solid card. How about the sorceries here, Chris? You want to read those to us? So we have seven sorceries. We have Black Sun Zenith, Damnation, Deep Analysis, Dread Return, Notion Rain, which is a horrible card, Toxic Deluge, <laughs> and Treasure Cruise, I'm which assuming, is a better card than Notion Rain. I'm assuming you're being sarcastic about Notion Rain. Oh, I, I, I play it in my... Uh, I love that card. <laughs> I, I play it all over the place, too. So. Seriously, that's like one of my... Fa- that, that was one of the best cards that really set in that calendar year. I was When I read that, when it came out, I was like, how come everyone's not amazed at Notion Rain? It's a better read the bones in a lot of decks, and read the bones is an amazing yes. card. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, Treasure Cruise is great, even though it does delve out of your graveyard. You're going to put so much stuff in the graveyard that you don't care about. There's going to be so many times you're just like, seven lands, peace out, I'm drawing three for one. So that's great there. Black Sun Zenith is a good board wipe. I don't know if I would run it myself. What do you guys think of Black Sun Zenith? I, it is, I'm so always torn on this card. Like there, there are those times when you're like, I've got nothing but three threes out. And this dude's got a bunch of one ones, and it's worth putting counters in my guys to kill his entire field and leave me with creatures left. Yep. But there's also those times when you're like, I need to wipe the whole board, and I have to spend eleven mana to do it right now. So I, I, I don't know. It burns me enough times, and there's enough times that it's good. I, I, so, I don't know if I run it in any of my decks anymore. So I, I think he should just run Kindred Dominance. The black kindred spell, which is five black black, so it's seven mana, pretty which hefty. But if you really need to put that much into black sun zenith, might as well kill everything that's not a zombie. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a slightly cheaper plague wind or in Guruk's wake at that point. It'll still kill your commander, but it'll you know save everything else. Or your wonder. Oh wait, yeah. you yeah. want him in the grave? <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> I mean, if you you're in black, run Rouse. I I think black sun zenith. Unless there's like a deck in the sh- in his meta where it's does a lot of work. I don't. I'd rather just run a flat out wrath that I would too kills everything. I would. I, I would agree. It's not a bad card. I think it's, but it's not a good enough card. Uh, I would rather run um, the decree of pain or whatever it is for it's, eight. Yeah, you can, you can still cycle it for four. Yeah, a- and right, which is not nothing. And if you got the little guys, then you just nuke them all. And there plus are, your net and, and a card. there are enough time, and, and it uses your whole turn up. But there's enough times when you're like, I don't care. I just drew 14 cards. Use my whole turn up. Yeah, and you wrath the board, and you, you're usually safe yeah. till your next turn. Right. Sometimes. Uh, I think deep analysis is a, is a decent fit here. It's four mana. Target player draws two cards, and it has flashback. Uh, I'm assuming the thought process there is if in case it gets milled, you can still reuse it. You got Chemistry's Insight, which has... Um, Jumpstart? Jumpstart. Which allows you to discard a zombie card out of your hand. That's true. Yeah. Plus it's at instant speed. I think you're running that instant, instead of deep analysis? Yep. Okay. I, I, I buy you that. St- you still get the flashback portion. You don't have to pay the life for it. Yeah. You draw cards at instant speed. So if it is in your hand, you can do it at any time. Or you can jumpstart it at any and time. And having the option to pitch a zombie is pretty useful, yes. too. That's a good call. Um, I think with the, this kind of came up a minute ago, mentioning that the fact that there are six Planeswalkers here, and he says that there are Super Friends decks as well. I would be very tempted to run the Elder Spell in this deck. Oh, I would be too. Oh, yeah. That crossed my mind when I was looking at this. I was just like, oh, can you imagine? Okay, so say he's playing one of those, and then he can alt Liliana and make Zom. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I just, even if I don't have 
one of my Tezzerts in play in my Veva deck. I very rarely regret seeing it. There's usually almost always one target worth killing. But there's enough of those times when you have a, you know multiple Planeswalkers out and you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put 17 counters on this thing. Yep, and then I can use this ultimate and... Immediately. Yep. Right. I would try it at least. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how often it's useful. Other than that, I mean, Dread Return is one of those cards. I guess I didn't look to see if there's a real obvious combo in here for it. There oftentimes is. It's a kind of a combo engine, but I didn't look and see what any of the ones... Because I, off the top of my head, I can't remember what any of the kind of staple Dread Return combos are. You're asking the wrong guy. I'm sorry. Cause it gets I can think of in, legacy cards yeah, that yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and maybe that's all it does it with. I don't, I don't know. Other than that, that's a pretty solid sorcery suite. I agree, though. Tra- Replace the Black Sun's Venith, I think. Yeah. That's just me. So, anything uh, else in sorceries here, guys? I'm good. How about enchantments? There's four enchantments. We've got a Dreadhorde Invasion, Necromancy, Necropotence, I said it correctly, and uh, Rooftop Storm. Four that are all pretty solid. What do you guys think of these? Before we started recording, Chris and I started talking about Dreadhorde Invasion. Okay. I am not a fan of it because you can only have one Amass token out at a time. Assuming you don't have multiple sack outlets. True. Which this deck does. It's got Frexian Altar, and there's a Frexian Tower, and there's a Skull Clamp, which will functionally work as one. And there's Grim Grin in here, and there was at least one more. So there's multiple ways to sacrifice that for value and then make another one next turn. I do tend to agree that it's not as useful as, I mean, obviously Bitter Blossom's a crazy card. Um, It's very easy to assume it's a Bitter Blossom, and it really isn't. But I think this is maybe a good enough deck where, like, I think you should run it in your R&K deck. You, you, with sack outlets, you have multiple sack outlets in the deck anyway, and one of them is in the command zone. Like, I think you're just going to make a token every turn and sacrifice it. I have to cut, like, three more cards in that <laughs> deck, so I don't want to add a fourth. No one's going to check to see if you're on 104. Just run 104. I ran, like, 98 I, in one deck for, like, a year straight, and I didn't realize and that. And nobody noticed, And see? there was a duplicate. It was fine. <laughs> That's why I count my decks like religiously <laughs> to make sure I am right on the number. I haven't, I haven't done that recently, but I've absolutely done that before. <laughs> actually, Chris was playing, I think, my Jero deck, and you're like, how come there's two pearl it wasn't even medallion? <laughs> yes. it, it was actually the marble, marble diamond, which is bad. Why do you have two of these bad mana rocks deck? I'm like, what? <laughs> so I've absolutely done that too. Um, anyway, I think, I think that's a good, I think this is, a, this is a deck where I would run that card. Okay. Uh, Necromancy is just another animated de- animate dead variant. Um, it's almost always pretty good. I, myself, I don't think there's any loops in this deck with it, um, other than you could just recast something. Um, I don't know. I think your commander does it. If I, don't, I don't know if it's necessary. What do you guys think? I don't think it's bad. It's a great card. I'm not going to ever say you shouldn't run it because you can hit other you, people's stuff you, with it. You, I like it because... Again, you can only do Geese and Drill once. One time. That's true. It's not like you can cast, it's not like a Haven Gullich where you pay one and cast a bunch of stuff for every time you want to cast something. It's You get to do it once, and okay. you can't copy it. There's, it's not a triggered ability. It's not an activated ability. So, so you can't even, like, you can't res- even resonate, like resonate it or something. It or something. Okay. So it's, I, I like the redundancy. Okay, that's fair. Uh, rooftop Storm. I, you know, I think it could come out. No, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's overrated. It's in the deck. It's for the deck. That's why the deck was yep. built. It's it's also one of those things like you almost are hesitant to run tutors because this would be your target almost every time. Yeah, or at least a lot of times you go get try to get rooftop storm. Oh, I wouldn't care. I'd just be like, oh, this is my deck. This is secretly my general though. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a hidden commander rooftop storm deck. Instance are seven of a max. Yeah, there are. So we have Dig Through Time, Entomb, Factor Fiction, Lazatep Plating, uh, Mental Note, Thought Scour, and Tragic Slip. So Dig Through Time is pretty obviously a great card. It's one more Delve one, and if Treasure Cruises is good enough, Dig Through Time is good enough in your deck probably. Uh, Entomb lets you put that Grave Crawler <laughs> right into your graveyard, which is going to be the creature you go grab most of the time, I would guess. Yeah. Uh, Factor Fiction is really solid. You get card. Factor Fiction in this kind of deck, Factor Fiction is a is a really good card. Even when there's a good choice for your opponent, there's no good choice in a deck where stuff in your graveyard is essentially a second hand. 
Um, Thought Scour, again, is one of those cards, I think, that it's in here specifically because you can use it to target yourself and, and put Thought something Thought Scour is also really cute when someone vamp tutors or yeah. does any other tutors. Like the, the, fact that it can, the, top two. the fact that it can flex <laughs> and do that is really, really useful. So there's a couple ones, though, I don't necessarily love. And we'll start with Lazatep Plating. It does have a mass one, so it makes a zombie. And it is only two mana. You and permanents you control gain hexproof until end of turn. So maybe it's a meta call. Maybe there's enough stuff in your particular meta where you are, it's worth making yourself hexproof sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, it's just a worse heroic intervention is what it is. It yeah, is. But it's a way worse heroic intervention <laughs> it's because blue, of course. the indestructible clause because on Because green is the most powerful color in magic. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Fight mean, me on this. In Commander, <laughs> you're not wrong, I don't think. I, I mean, worst case, it's protection against uh, Tormod script. Sure. Um, okay. That's fair. But, but Jukabog, any but of that Jukabog, stuff. Yeah. That's any true. That stuff. Okay. Protects you from Jukabog, protects you from, you know, uh, no little spell oh. bomb and yeah. Rogue Progenitus and... A lot of the planeswalkers in a control shell have tap abilities, so you're stopping those from happening if they try to tap your stuff down. Okay. Um, I, I like it. I, I loved this card in pre-release. Like, I, this did work for me in a limited environment. Well, yeah, I wish you only have 200 cards in a set. Of course it's going to do work. <laughs> I, I always felt like I would rather probably just run a good counterspell most of the time, but I can see what you're saying. The, the ability to protect yourself from a Juka, Bajuka Bog or something seems pretty useful. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm going to be on board with that. Uh, tragic Slip. No. I, mean, I understand this. With the sure. amount of sack outlets in here sure. and stuff like that, you can get it, to, but it's only one target. Mm-hmm. So unless it's something that you're really scared of, I think it's just kind of a waste of a slot. Well, or just run, I would ever just run Reality Shift and just always know I can hit the thing I want to I want to yep. hit. I don't have to worry, like, because there's times when you're going to drag Tragic Slip and you're not going to have a sack out of that one. You're like, I, it's it's not going to solve my problem. Reality Chef for one more mana is just always going to solve it every single time. So I would probably replace it with that myself if you want a targeted removal spell. We did technically miss one because it's in with the creatures. Uh, Murderous Rider, if you cast the adventure side, it is oh, a, sure, it's sure. an instant speed hero's downfall. And I think the flexibility there on that you can hit a planeswalker with it and it becomes a creature if you want to cast it after the adventure. That's so flexible. I would right. probably run that, but I, I would replace slip, I think, with something else. Yeah. Just another targeted, better targeted removal spell. Um, what do you guys think of mental note? Unlike Thought Scour, you can't flex that and hit somebody else if they try to do some top deck shenanigans. I love all these cards that you can self mill, but I didn't see a single. Um... Rea- the mass like reanimation. Mass reanimations. Yeah. There's no living death in here. There's no Rise of the Dark Realms. There's yes. no zombie, zombie apocalypse. apocalypse. So if you're going to run like these self mill cards, I would run those along with it because it just it feels into your game plan. Yeah. I, I feel like Mental Note just doesn't quite do enough. Or at least it doesn't do that much more. You, you've already got a bunch of things, including your commander that put cards in your graveyard. Is it worth spending a mana to put two more in? I just don't think that's impactful enough. I'd rather have a scry off of like a serum visions or something like or that. An, an opt or or go hard and traumatize yourself. Right? Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I don't know if this is the deck for it. Like when I, because I've absolutely lost a bunch of games to trauma self traumatize before, but it's in deck for the person's running living death and and living end and rise of dark realms and you know a bunch of those kind of effects. Or they go. This deck isn't doing it. Turn six, Bruna. Turn seven, traumatize myself, attack <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that would uh, that, that might would be do my it. buddy's deck. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think mental note probably isn't quite good enough there. Um, okay, planeswalkers. Chris, what do we got here? We have six planeswalkers. Ashiok Dream Render. Right, I spell. I pronounce that run right. I think, yeah, Not renderer. Render. render. It's, I think it's just render. Okay. Uh, Jason Reveler of Secrets, Liliana Death's Majesty, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Liliana Untouched by Death, and one more Liliana in The Last Hope. Yeah, so six Planeswalkers, four of which are Lilianas. Uh, so we mentioned Jace, he likes the art. It's not a bad card, I don't think, by any touch of the imagination. Um, Scry one, then draw is pretty solid um, for a plus one. He does a five loyalty, and he can bounce a creature with the owner's hand which might be something like your commander here to recast it to mill yes. more. 
Um, I don't know how often you do that, but like I think you might do it once in a while or bounce that flush bag back to your hand or something. Um, so that's not nothing. Yeah, it's I, I, it's in here for flavor. I don't think it's as powerful as something else maybe could be, but I respect the card. It's But it's not a bad card either. Right. And the flavor, I think, offsets it. His ultimate's pretty good too. His emblem. Yeah. Um, Ashiok is really, really good. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. That's really solid. And then target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. So you're probably going to mill yourself, presumably, and then shut up, shut up everybody else's graveyards. That's really, really good. Yeah. Is that in your Phoenix deck? I didn't see it the other day, but it is. It is okay. <laughs> yes. I assume that would be. Both are in there. Are you I, kidding me? Right, nice. I would be extremely disappointed if... It was not in Chris's Phoenix <laughs> deck, and I didn't even get to see that And then deck. There's, there's even a couple of Jaces in there. Ooh. Nice. Like the Mind Sculptor's in there because his ultimate just goes, oh, you lose. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I mill your entire deck. <laughs> so there's then four Lilianas, um, Death's Majesty and Dreadhorde General, Untouched by Death and The Last Hope, all of which care about zombies for the most part. Yep, and I noticed with uh, Liliana Untouched by Death, um, I'm seeing more of a synergy with the mill cards yep. where her minus three, you can cast them. You know, any zombie card from your graveyard, you yep. know. So you can cast multiples. But I still don't think that quite plays in enough because you need a lot of mana to cast them. Yeah. Yeah, you probably aren't going to do that the turn she comes into play. Yes. Um, so you have to protect her then to use her. But, like, if you're running, if your theme is kind of Liliana stuff, I get it. Um, I myself would probably, like, if I was just building this deck for power, I would maybe run Ashok and I don't know if I'd run anything else. I would run Dreadhorde General. Probably Dreadhorde General, yeah. That whenever a creature you control dies, draw the a card. Last is so good. hope, guys. Come on. That's solid. Her alt is just lights out. Yeah, you gotta you can't, get there, that's man. That's one of those things, like, I, I hate, you can't rate playing the lockers by their alt because it's so tough to get there. Especially in Demir with no proliferation. And, and, the Elder Spell's for. In very slow. Like, <laughs> Elder Spell, all of this, alter, I win the game. Actually, more than, more than the proliferation or something in Demir, the problem with this kind of deck tends to be flyers. Yes. Like it's, it's really easy for flyers to get through and hit your planeswalkers. Um, Which you could play Levitation as an enchantment. There you go, I guess. Or, you know, you do a ways to sacrifice wonder. Oh, Drowsy Monument? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that might be one of those uh, go-to cards, though. So Well, that because that would work wonderful with Dreadhorde Invasion. Yeah, it would. Just sack that token off and then... Make a new one. Make a new one. and <laughs> So, okay... Chris mentioned Levitation, and we're jumping over to Creatures next. I'll start at the bottom and work our way up from the Creature list just because this is a easy card to talk about. We mentioned Wonder. You want it in your graveyard because it gives your creatures flying. It makes sense to give zombies flying, um, but it's not a zombie. It doesn't synergize any, one of your, any of your other zombies. You can't skull clamp it. So would you be better off just running Levitation? making it harder to remove, you know, wonder, and it comes into play if somebody exiles it, it doesn't do anything from your graveyard. If someone hits your graveyard, it doesn't do you any good. I, I, I don't know. I'm asking that question. I'm not saying I have an opinion because I don't know if I do, but I think there are situations where it makes sense to just run levitation and not have to worry about someone hitting your graveyard in response. What do you guys think? If I had to choose between the yeah. two of them? I can't have both of them. Um, but no, you, you could. Well, which, in this deck, in this deck right now, if I told you, if if I gave you the rest of the deck as it is right now and told you to make that either pick wonder or levitation, which do you think you would run? Wonder. Okay. How about you, Max? I wouldn't pick either. I'd spend one more and go get Eldrazi Monument. I was just going to oh, get Eldrazi Monument. <laughs> I would probably do that. I think. I mean, four mana. I'm that's spend that's one not more. the question. No, what no. are you doing over okay, here? So, uh, let's, Cheating. Let's, so let's expand. <laughs> if, if you had to pick between Wonder and Levitation, Max, which would you pick? Levitation. I might, but I don't think it's... Uh, I would probably go Levitation, but I, th I don't think Wonder is an incorrect pick. Now let's add Eldrazi, Eldrazi Monument to the mix for one more mana. I would take Wonder and Eldrazi Monument. Okay. Because uh, Wonder's easier to cast. Long term, one single blue pip. And you then sac can sacrifice Eldrazi. It's one right. more thing you can sac to Eldrazi Monument. Yeah. Um, I would, if I had to choose the three of them, I would run Eldrazi Monument, I yes. think. 
I agree. That'd be my first Particularly choice. Particularly in a deck where you have access to things like Gravecrawler that comes back from your graveyard and zombie and, and, and amass tokens and whatever, it's pretty easy to fuel that Eldrazi Monument. And it itself is kind of a win condition. That that plus one, plus oh is not nothing. No. Particularly in a deck with a lot of creatures, that can make a pretty big difference. It also doesn't screw over your skull clamp. And they're also indestructible. You bet. That's a big so deal. That you dodge the board wipes. Absolutely. Also. Uh, the downfall to it is it puts a huge target on your back. It absolutely does. Um, but it is, it, it's only one more mana. I would be really tempted to make that wonder slash levitation slot into Eldrazi Monument. Yeah. So um, let's move up the list here. You've got uh, Withered Wretch, which is kind of an old zombie card. One remove target card in a graveyard from the game. So it's a zombie that centers with your zombies, and it gives you some graveyard hate on top of it. Um I've seen this do work, and there's not a lot of downside for a 2-2 two, two for 2. What do you guys think of that one? I don't mind it at all. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, it's a black scavenger. Kind of, yeah. Without getting yeah. larger in power and toughness. Yeah. Uh, Vizier of Many Faces for 4, and you can have it under the battlefield as a copy of any creature in the battlefield, except if Vizier of Many Faces was embalmed, the token has no mana cost, it's white, and it's a zombie. It has embalm 5. I don't like it. I don't dislike it, but I think there's just better zombies. I'm okay with this okay. for one simple fact. It can copy anything with no. the embalm. Because when you yeah. were milling with Geese and Drolf, okay, four cards go in. Yep. Say this goes in and two other zombies. You can cast one of the zombies and then embalm. So you're getting two casts in one turn. True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I still don't know if I like it enough. I would rather just run a lord. Yeah, I'd rather run a zombie master and have a good chance to give all my stuff swamp walk and be able to kill somebody. Yeah. Like the the legitimately having played against a couple different zombie decks, zombie master is really easy to dismiss because swamp because the like the swamp walk kind of things. Anything with walk is such an old mechanic and you almost never see it. It's easy to kind of blow it off. I've lost plenty of games to that stupid zombies have swamp walk ability. With an Urborg? <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, because I play plenty of black, but number two, with Urborg in it, yep. and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, I thought I could block four things this turn, and I can block nothing, and I'm going to die. Yeah. So I kind of agree with you there, Max. I don't think it's a bad card, and I, that's a good point, Chris. If it gets milled, it's a way to bring something back without relying on your commander. Yep. Vindictive Lich is a relatively new card that was from a commander set, I think, a year or so ago. Yeah, the tribal ones. Uh, you want to read that to us quick, Max? Because I think it's because it's got a lot of text on it. Yeah, so it's a uh, Vindictive Lich, three and a black for a four-one zombie wizard. Uh, when it dies, choose one or more. Each mode must target a different player. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Target opponent discards two cards, and target opponent loses five life. Well, that seems fun to recur. Yeah, yeah. Skull clamp it. It's so like, you draw two cards too, so there's like five modes on it. Yep. Nice. I forgot that is definitely skull clampable. Um, yeah, that's solid. I mean, I'm going to probably put it in a zombie deck if I was playing zombies. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with it. Uh, moving on, we're looking at Vengeful Dead. Whenever Vengeful Dead or another zombie is put into a graveyard from play, each opponent loses a life. So there's definitely loops that can happen there. Maybe yep. not, not infinite ones, but like, again, Gravecrawler, there's plenty of times when you can just dome somebody in a single turn for seven or eight by just playing your Gravecrawler. You know, and we didn't mention this in Artifacts, but if you wanted to kind of pile onto this drain effect, throw a uh, Bantu's Monument in here. Yeah, All your true. black spells are going to, all your black creatures are going to drain one and gain one for you. And, you know, I said there isn't infinite loops, but that's not true, actually. Frexian Altar and Gravecrawler makes enough, to, makes infinite casts of... Shh, grave crawler. we weren't going to tell <laughs> any true. of these all right, things. All right, all right. <laughs> we kind of did when we said, as long as there's a grave crawler, you <laughs> right, have an true. infinite loop. Yeah. Uh, undead war chief, zombies cost one less, and they get plus two plus one. That's also a really big deal, that plus two plus one part of it. Yeah. Has absolutely screwed me over before in games. Um, undead auger, this was a this was a Modern Horizons card, right? Um, whenever undead auger or another zombie you control dies, to draw a card and lose a life. We don't care about losing life. We're just drawing cards. That's awesome. Scarab God is really solid. And Stitcher Supplier. Card so good it uh, was in Hog Daddy decks. I don't really like this card so, in here. I think it's too much, Mel. I don't 
know if I do either. I don't know if it's impactful enough. I think it's that early game board presence. It's a great, it's a great card in like your ter- first two or three or four turns, I think. I think you don't want to see it after that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, again, I think just running a lord like Cemetery Reaper, because yeah. that lets you bring something back, I believe. It yeah. has a tap mode on it. Cemetery Reaper has an activated ability of some sort. We'll look that up real quick while I read the next card, which is Relentless Dead, which is kind of a not as good grave crawler. When it dies, you can pay one and return it to its owner's hand. And when it dies, you may pay X if you do return another target zombie creature card with CMC X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's a little bit better than grave crawler. Uh, no, not for infinite combo yes, stretches, yeah. but for game gameplay in general, I think it's I would better. definitely run them both. I would run this for sure. So it's a good card. Uh, Max just looked up something. What'd you look up? Uh, right? Cemetery Reaper's activated ability is two and a black and tap it. Exile target creature ca- card from a graveyard and then make a 2-2 black zombie token. Yeah. That's... So a little more grave hate makes a token in response and you, it's a lord as well. Yep. Uh, why don't you take the next couple here, Max? Okay. So we just ended at Re- Relentless Dead. So yep. we have Prized Amalgam. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it, uh, from your graveyard, return prize amalgam to the graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. So just auto recursion. You don't have to worry about this one. Perfect, perfect deck for it. Yeah. I think, as a matter of fact, I believe it, it has Giralf in the art. It does. Stitching up the zombie. Hint, hint, run this card. Is what it's <laughs> saying. Uh, we have Plague Belcher. Uh, it's a three mana, five, four uh, zombie beast with menace. When it enters the battlefield, put two minus one, minus one counters on target creature you control. Then whenever another zombie you control dies, each opponent loses a life. So worst case, it's a three mana, three two. Yep. With menace. We have Noxious Ghoul. It's a five mana, three and two black, three three. Uh, Whenever it or another zombie comes into play, all non-zombie creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So, you know, play this, play a couple low-cost zombies, and then cast your Blacks and Zenith, I guess, yeah. and finish them off. I, I don't think people, you, you don't quite realize how good Noxious Ghoul is in um, a zombie deck until you've played against one. Not that it doesn't look good, but, like, it's way better than it even looks when you're trying to play against it, and you're like, oh, I can't play. I, anything I play is going to die next turn because he's going to make enough zombies that it's wiping my board every time. Um, and Tuco Husk. Three mana for a 2-2, two, two, sacrifice a creature, and Nantuka Husk gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So mostly just a free sack outlet. This was great in Coco in Standard. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Murderous Rider, we talked about that a little earlier. Yep. You can cast it for the adventure. Otherwise, it's a 2-3 lifelinking uh, zombie knight, and when it dies, put it on the bottom of your its owner's library. We have Milken. Two mana, zero, one, that you can tap to put the top card of your library into a graveyard and add a colorless. I don't think it's good enough. No. It's not a zombie. doesn't... Synergize with your zombies. It doesn't do anything until the next turn. So you can't... And then unless you have a way to give it haste, you can't use it that turn. I just don't think it's good enough. I don't think so, neither. Uh, Midnight Reaper. Zombie Knight. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, it deals one damage to you and you draw a card. Uh, so, yeah, I'd sacrifice a couple of grave crawlers there and draw three or four or five. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, why not? Keterik Leviathan for for eight mana. Leviathan, so this is a non-zombie. And when it comes into play, return all other non-land permanents to their owner's hands. So this is what he mentioned as kind of his, he's using as a replacement for... Rift. For Rift. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you're using it for, it's fine. And it, it, I, I'm assuming this is kind of that Oblivion Ring. But you get double rift off of them. Yeah, and you can use it again. So if, yes. this, if this gets milled, you can unearth it and do it again, which is, I think, pretty useful. Um, and, and it's worth noting, like the Oblivion Stone thing that we mentioned earlier, it's all other permanents. So yep. you're, like, you're in Demir where you can't deal with artifacts or enchantments, and this is a way to deal with them at least temporarily. Josu Vess, Lich Knight, 4-5 um, for four mana, which is kind of uneventful, even though it has menace. But when it enters the battlefield, if you kick it, and the kicker is an additional six, create eight 2-2 two, two zombie knight creature tokens with menace. So with menace. T- 20 damage for 10 mana. That's a, that's a pretty good value. Um, if you can, But you want to kick it, I think. This Most is, of the time, This yes. is definitely a finisher, yeah. But it's a finisher, and you need to have those. So 
I think that's a reasonable card. A Grim Grin, Corpse Born, and he's also kind of a finisher. Oh, for sure. And he's a backup commander, kind of in, in you know, you could very easily probably swap out Geese and Draw for Grim Grin and not make a lot of changes to the deck, too. You probably don't have to make any changes, yeah. really. So, You're still sacrificing stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's after Grim Grin here, Chris? Gray Merchant of <laughs> Asphodel. Yeah, I've never heard of this card. So uh, we'll just skip past we call, it. We'll call can, it Gary. Can, can, we'll call can, some Gary action. Is there a combo here? I've heard that it's good card, I guess. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't have to have a combo. Even if you just cast it and do nothing else to generate, it's a fantastic <laughs> card. Like you know, even if you're doing nothing recursive or blinking <laughs> it or abusing it, it's still a, a crazy good card in the zombie deck. Yeah. This kills when, people. When it just comes in, it kills. Yeah, right, <laughs> you don't right. Even have to 20, recur right, once pl- a time. Plenty of times it's gonna just drop and and put everyone in kill range even if it doesn't kill them, and then put you out of kill range. Yeah. Let alone if you then sacrifice and recur it with, with Geese and Drolf. So crazy. It's even better when it doesn't cost any mana with Rooftop Storm. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then following that up with a Grave Crawler. Grave Crawler. <laughs> uh, that was a mis- Grave Crawler was a mistake. But it's a great card and it's fun to play. It is. Um, Graveborn Muse. So this will kill you. You got to live on the edge, man. But <laughs> that'll be fun. I like dying to that kind of thing once in a while. So we'll... uh, I haven't <laughs> seen that card in a while. <laughs> um, I have seen uh, at least once in Vegas somebody died to their own <laughs> in a Verena in, deck. In I a Verena deck, yeah. Um, I wouldn't even care. I no, just look at everybody yeah, and be like, "What's not. up, Scrubs? I've got all these cards. What's your problem?" <laughs> For sure, I do not mind dying to that kind of thing. Flush bags, great recursive. Um, Diagraph Colossus then we're looking at here, which is actually a pretty solid card. I think it, it's really powerful. Yeah, it ETBs with with a plus one counter on it for each zombie in your graveyard. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, you put a zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Um, yeah, that's really good. And doesn't make a difference here, but it's alesha a bull in Chris's Alesha deck. It is, but it doesn't do enough. <laughs> doesn't do enough for you? Okay. Diagraph Captain, which got mentioned before, which lets you generate some nice... Uh, Damage triggers, particularly with your grave crawler. And another lord. Yep. What do you guys think of Diagraph Assistant? Deranged Assistant? Excuse me, Deranged Assistant. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. Human Wizard, put the top card of your library in your graveyard. It's the and same thing as Milliken, which I don't like. I don't know, if this, I don't know if this one's good enough either. Nope. I get it. I, like, I understand the logic. He wants to mill, but I think there's enough things that mill. You don't need to waste a slot on something that mills you next turn. I have something better. Okay, what's that? Rotting Regisaur. It's the oh, three yeah, mana yeah. zombie dino uh, for a seven six, and at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. Or sack it. No. Or, I thought it was just, or sack it. No, just discard there a card. There is no penalty if you cannot discard a card. I had to check the rules text because I thought that's what it was too. Yeah, that's a, that would be a good call here, I think. And it's a zombie. And it's a zombie. Zombie dinosaur, right? Yep. <laughs> Seven six for three. If you and then yeah, if you have no cards in hand when ro- Rotting Regisaur's triggered ability resolves, you simply do not discard any cards. There is no penalty for being unable to do so. All right, I like that. I think Crypt Breaker is a really good card here. One mana, and you can spend one in a black to discard a card and put a two two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, you can also tap three untapped zombies you control to draw a card and lose a life, which is pretty useful, but. Being able to pitch a zombie that you're just going to recur anyway feels pretty good. Uh, Carrion Feeder, one black. It can't block. Sacrifice a creature to put a plus one counter on it. It's just one more sack outlet that has no mana activation costs. And last is Apprentice Necromancer for one and a black. Sacrifice Apprentice Necromancer um, for one black and a tap and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste and being in the next step, you sacrifice it. Man, I yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's a backup plan, I guess. Um, I don't know if I like it enough. I think I'd rather just run like reanimate or something. Yeah, it is a zombie, so you can recast it um, with Geese and Rolf. It just I don't know if it's impactful enough, and it takes too long to get the value out of it you want. What do you guys think? Sacrifice. Return. I, yeah, I'm not a big fan. It's fine. I mean, you do sacrifice it, so it's not an yeah. exile clause, which is nice. Yeah. Because, I mean, the my alternative would be 
run whip Verbos, you have some lifelink built into your deck and you can whip something back if you need in to. case you don't have Geese and Giralf out, but that exiles the token. It does. So, I mean, I can see why this is in here. I like it better than the, the Milliken and the Deranged Assistant. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's bad. I just think it's not quite good enough. Yeah. So... What do you guys think of Unbreathing Horde, which isn't in here, which is a zombie. It's a 0-0, zero, zero, but an ETB is with a plus one counter on it for each other zombie you control and each zombie in your graveyard. Um, so it could come into play as a pretty big body. I think that would be one I would maybe consider. It's efficient, and it gives you also kind of one more one more pseudo-closer that's going to come into play as a 10-10 sometimes. So I would maybe consider that in one of those slots instead of like the Milliken kind of thing. Yeah. Any other creatures that you guys wanted to see here, maybe? I'm looking up one right now. Okay. There are plenty of Lord options that aren't in here. There's Death Baron. There's Lord of the Undead. Um, I think those are the main... Lord of the Accursed has the activate ability, give all your zombies yep. menace. Um, you could run something like Witch Lord of Unks as a win condition. Witch Lord but, of Unks is a really good card. I mean, his his second activation for double blue, double black, target player loses X life and puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard where X is the number of zombies you control, that can just kill people. Yeah. If you have, you know, a couple, do- you have a dozen tokens and a couple bodies, including him, four mana, mill someone for, you know, 16 and yeah. hit him for 16, do it again. Yeah, I think those are the main ones that I was thinking of. Um, this is a relatively tight deck for the most part. I mean, it's it's... It's the kind of thing he's been playing for a while, so yeah. there's not a ton of stuff here. There's also Risen Executioner. That's another zombie lord. I think we didn't mention that isn't in here. That lets you cast it back from the graveyard again. Yes. So there's a few of those different kind of options here. Uh, any final thoughts from anybody here? I, I think this is a cool deck. Uh, you know, like I said earlier in the show, I used to run this deck. Yeah. And I think we've gotten a lot more zombies since I had the deck where it could be something cool to revisit. You know, it's it's not Verena. Those are typically the zombie decks you see yeah. right now are Verena or maybe a Grim Grin or uh, like he kind of said in his notes, uh, the Scorp- the Scarab God are typically what you see with zombie decks just because it has good ability yeah. to bring stuff back out of anyone's graveyard. So it's really cool to see a, a commander from a, a, a not so well-liked set like Shadows over Innistrad or Eldritch mm-hmm. Moon, whichever one this one was from, Eldritch Moon, uh, kind of see the light of day again. Um, I would like to maybe also see the, the, the two god zombies in here, Bantu and um, Kefnet. Um, Bantu would be interesting. Bantu would be cool. I think there's not enough spells for Kefnet except that it's a flyer. It's a flyer, and it's a pretty beater body on there. That's yeah. true. That's a good point about, about Kefnet and the, the spells. Um, but I think Bantu would be pretty solid here. And you will never mill yourself. Yeah. That's true. Them. That's true. Third from the top, one card left. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the deck, too. I like zombies, actually, in general. I've tried a couple different times to make a zombie deck that was different enough, and I always come back to, I know three people that have zombie decks, and it's my version of it's not going to be different enough from them, but I, but I, it's they're always fun to play against, and they're always fun to play as well. Yeah. So I am a fan of this. Um, I have not seen, I actually kind of forgot about Ge- Geese and Drolf. It came up on the EDH Rec cast last week for some reason, and... I just hadn't thought about the card in forever. Oh, that's right. It was one of those who would you target first pods. Yeah, yeah. But like we had, there was this weird thing they were doing, it seemed like, for a bunch of those sets where they were releasing two characters on one card as a just kind of a useful rare. We had um, Mina and Den came off the set before this. So they were, they were kind of doing this thing there for a while, but it, it was just easy to kind of forget. But I think this is better than the Gisa or the Giralf card, too. I think it depends on what you want to do. I think the mono black Gisa is really cool if you want to go super wide with tokens and whatnot. And that's what this deck could easily get flipped into if yeah. you just drop all the blue. But you lose Rooftop Storm. Right, yeah. And I, it, Rooftop Storm is fun enough to play that I get keeping it, yeah. for sure. So, all right. Well, I think that is going to wrap this up. I want to say thank you very much to uh, William for sharing this deck with us and for supporting us on Patreon. That feels Pretty good to have people uh, support the show. Yes, it does. And I'm continuously shocked that people that people hey. do it. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is our Halloween show, and my costume was I put a pair of pants on. You so. did. It's looking good. <laughs> You're looking good there, Max. All right. 
Well, thank you very much. If you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash CMDR Central and read the rewards and see how you too can get one of these decks you play down in a Thursday show. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, William. We'll be back next Monday. Um, our podcast theme is Retro Future Dirty by Kevin McLeod, licensed via Creative Commons. Our show is edited by Ken Peddle. You can find him on Twitter at LOAD3R. You can find me on Twitter at Dana Roach. You can find Max at CMDR Central underscore Max. And you can find Chris at WiseSquishy1. Until next week, I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. <laughs>